Hey everyone, welcome back to Thread Education. In this video, we're going to be looking at how Travis Scott's sense of fashion has changed over the years, as well as his best fits along the way. This is the style evolution of Travis Scott. Also, only some of you watching are actually subscribed, so if you end up liking the video, please think about subscribing. It's free to you and means a lot to me. Now let's get started. Now I debated not even going back this early, but if we're gonna capture his full progression, I think it's important that I do include it. And if you're wondering why I thought about not including it, it's because during this time period, Travis did not have what Gucci Mane would refer to as the sauce. So if you don't got no sauce, then you lost. Mm -hmm. I'll cut him some slack because this was way back when he was still in Missouri City, Texas, making beats at his parents' house. And to be honest, he's still better dressed than I was at this age, so it could be a whole lot worse. The main point here is that in his early years, Travis wasn't really showing any interest in fashion. At least not to the extent of guys like Lucas Sabat, who was buying and selling vintage Saint Laurent at age 16. Anyways, that was all about to change when Travis started making a name for himself in the music industry. In 2012, Travis signed to Good Music. This had a major impact on his style because he now had some money to upgrade his wardrobe and perhaps more importantly, he was now hanging around the likes of Kanye West. Kanye is obviously known for his style, so it was only a matter of time before that started rubbing off on Travis. You can see here a picture of Kanye and Travis together in 2012 and Travis is wearing a big bomber jacket. I won't lie, this jacket kind of screams this is my first year being into streetwear, but hey, you gotta start somewhere and while he definitely was wasn't the most stylish rapper, he was definitely beginning to find his own style. Now you may notice that almost all of his fits from this time period featured some sort of camo, including this masterpiece. In fact, his love for camo made its way into his collab with Ben Trill. I talked a bit about Ben Trill in my video about the history of Virgil Abloh, but just as a reminder, Ben Trill was a label slash DJ collective founded by Virgil Abloh, Matthew Williams, Heron Preston, and Justin Saunders. In 2012, they collabed with Travis to release camo shirts featuring Travis's nickname, La Flame. And in my opinion, this was the first time that Travis really became known for his style. Remember that Travis dropped his debut mixtape, Owl Pharaoh, around around the same time that this collab came out. So this was Travis's aesthetic when most people started finding out about him. The last thing that I'll say about this stage in Travis Scott's style evolution is that for the most part, he was just wearing Vans around this time. He even wore them on the cover of Owl Pharaoh. And this is important to track because as you know, sneakers will go on to be a major part of Travis's style. But we'll get to that in just a bit. If you're a fan of Travis, you'll know that his mixtape Days Before Rodeo dropped in 2014. And much like his music during this time period, his style got a whole lot darker. He finally gave up the camo and started going with this blend of streetwear and grunge aesthetics. This basically just meant that he started wearing vintage rock tees, the color black, and sunglasses with almost every outfit. In terms of shoes, he was still wearing mostly Vans, which kind of go well with this look and he's actually wearing all white high top vans in the cover art for days before rodeo. So they've made appearances on two projects in a row now. Perhaps the most important thing that happened for Travis's style evolution in 2014 was making his first appearance at New York Fashion Week. And he wasn't just there to watch, he actually walked for Mark McNary's spring summer 2015 show. During the show, rather than walking normally like all of the other models, Travis basically just jumped around and skipped down the runway. And when the show was over, he flipped off the photographer and jumped on Mark McNary's back. I'll be honest, it's very possible that all of this was staged, but even if it was, it still made the headlines. And I have to think that all of the fashion magazines talking about Travis further solidified him as a figure in the fashion scene, even if it wasn't for the best reasons. And like I said, the whole thing could have been and very likely was staged, but it's also possible that this was just Travis wilding out, because to my knowledge, he has not been invited back to walk the runway ever since this incident, so maybe other designers are trying to avoid a repeat performance. All things considered though, 2014 was a breakout year for Travis Scott's style evolution. 
It comes as no surprise that 2015 was another important year for Travis's style evolution, because this was the year that he dropped his debut studio album Rodeo. With the release of his new album, it appears that Travis decided to abandon the grunge aesthetic and he started leaning back into streetwear. At the time, he was mostly wearing Supreme, and he wasn't just wearing general release Supreme, he was wearing extremely rare and expensive vintage Supreme. As you may know, 2015 was around the time that Supreme was still peaking in mainstream popularity. So based Basically, every new fit that Travis wore was being circulated around the internet. He was definitely not the first rapper to wear Supreme, but he definitely hijacked the hype train and used it to his advantage. I will note though that on occasion he mixed in some higher end pieces like Stone Island, and he even gave up Vans to start wearing Kanye's Adidas Yeezys, which were just coming out at the time. 2015 was also the year that Travis released his first collaboration with Bape. Like I mentioned, Bape was one of his favorite brands when he was first getting popular, so for him to get this collaboration was a major accomplishment. He also celebrated the release of his album with a full merch collection. While this collection wasn't anything crazy, Travis was often pictured wearing his own merch, and by selling it to the general public he opened the door for his fans to start dressing like him, and trust me, they did. I'm sure at some point we've all known a person who was turned into a Travis Scott clone, maybe you've been that person, but the bottom line is that Travis isn't like other rappers who just wear Gucci head to toe. He has his own unique style, but it's still really easy for his fans to emulate. Whether you like that style or not is a different question. That being said, in my opinion, 2015 was really the year that Travis became a full-on fashion influencer. I'm not gonna act like Travis's style changed drastically in the two years following his debut album, but I will say that his style evolved to be a bit more high-end. I mean seriously, he went from wearing Bape bomber jackets to wearing Raph Simmons bomber jackets. I think the perfect summation of Travis's style during this period is this Supreme Louis Vuitton fit. He really loves mixing high fashion and streetwear, and it's something that we continue to see him do even today. He even stepped up his merch by collaborating with London-based streetwear label Maharishi to release a capsule collection, and this was just the beginning. In 2016, he started a campaign for Alexander Wang, and then in 2017 alone, he collaborated with both Helmut Lang and Subi. According to Travis Scott, Helmut Lang has always been one of his high fashion inspirations. And in 2017, he finally got his own collaboration that was basically a modern streetwear style update to vintage Helmut Lang. He then got his own Subi collaboration, which mainly featured distressed denim, graphic tees, hoodies, and of course, you guessed it a bomber jacket. And listen, I'm a fan of Travis, but I'm really not a fan of either of these collaborations. That being said, these major brands obviously saw some sort of value in Travis's role as a style influencer. It comes as no surprise that these collections sold extremely well, and after all, these collaborations were just a hint of things to come in the future, because 2017 was the year that Travis first began working with Nike. In early 2017, we saw a few leaked images of Travis Scott Jordan brand Trunners. Even though these these never released, this let the world know that Travis was officially working with Nike. It wasn't until the end of 2017 that Travis and Nike released an Air Force One. I remember the hype at this time was real, and I'll even be honest, I ended up buying into the hype and paying resale for these, because I didn't know if this Travis-Nike collab was going to be a one-time thing, or if it was going to be an ongoing partnership. As we now know, it is in fact an ongoing partnership, and this was just the start of a new stage in Travis Scott's style evolution. Travis and Nike kicked off 2018 by launching the Cactus Jack Jordan 4, and we also got a few glimpses of friends and family purple suede and olive versions of the Jordan 4. Here you can see Travis again mixing high fashion and streetwear by pairing his purple suede Jordan 4s with Virgil Abloh's Louis Vuitton. These sneakers are just a few of the many collaborations that Travis has now done with Nike, including his own Air Jordan 1. It says a lot that Nike is letting Travis reimagine all of these classic silhouettes, and I'd say it's paid off pretty well because these Cactus Jack Nikes are extremely hyped. Even beyond Nike, 2018 was a breakout year for Travis's style evolution because this was the year that he dropped Astro World. And Astro World tour merch has basically taken on a life of its own. It even included a collaboration with Virgil Abloh, which of course just added to the hype. Now even if most of the people wearing this tour merch are just Travis Scott Fortnite fanboys, don't let this fool you because Travis Scott has pulled off some genuinely good fits during this time period. Perhaps most notably, the Alex 
Alexander Wang suit he wore alongside Kylie Jenner at the 2018 Met Gala. Don't get me wrong, I know that this outfit was put together by Alexander Wang and a team of stylists, but hey, Travis pulled it off really well. He also had his now famous 2019 Super Bowl performance where he wore Cactus Jack Jordans, Louis Vuitton, and Astroworld merch all in the same fit. This isn't the type of fit you'd expect to see him walking around in, but for a halftime show, it got the job done. So that brings us to present day, 2020. First, let's get the elephant out of the room. I'm not even going to talk about the McDonald's collab because I don't even think I've seen Travis wearing his own McDonald's merch. But there, you can't say I didn't mention it. Slightly better, but not much better, was his PlayStation collab. It seemed kind of forced, but the dunks are actually kind of cool. I wouldn't wear them, but they're kind of cool. But to speak more broadly about Travis's style in 2020, I think we're at the forefront of a new stage in his style evolution. Don't get me wrong, he's still pulling off a lot of high fashion streetwear fits, but to me it's like he's starting to trend towards a classier, more futuristic look. If this history of his style evolution has taught you anything, it's that his style changes when he drops a new album. So maybe this futuristic look is just him getting ready to drop Utopia. I mean just look at these glasses. If he wore these a few years ago, people would go crazy. But at this point we're kind of just like, yeah that seems like Travis. In fact, I think this just goes to show a point that I've been building towards all along, and that is Travis is one of those guys who looks good in everything he wears. Well, maybe not everything, but for the most part it seems like he's now such a superstar that everything he wears becomes cool by default, even if it's not that cool. I'm really interested to see what Travis's style is gonna look like when Utopia finally does drop. And I already know that we're gonna be seeing Utopia merch everywhere, regardless of what it looks like. So get ready for that. Anyways, that about sums up the style evolution of Travis Scott. Even if you don't love his style, I hope that you enjoyed seeing his transition from this, all the way to this. And if you want to see me do the style evolution of another artist, let me know down below. Like I said at the beginning, if you did like the video, consider subscribing. It's free to you and means a lot to me. And other than that, thank you for watching Thread Education, and I'll see you next time.